Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about congenital malformations of eyelids. First, let us discuss about epicanthal folds. In epicanthal folds, there are bilateral vertical folds of skin that extend from upper or lower lids towards medial canthus. It can lead to pseudoesotropia. It can involve upper or lower lids or both. Lower lid folds extending upwards to medial canthal area is called as epicanthus inversus. This picture shows epicanthus inversus. It is associated with blepharophimosis syndrome. The treatment of epicanthic folds is with VY or Z plasty. Now let us discuss about telecanthus. It is an uncommon condition. It can occur in isolation or it can occur associated with blepharophimosis. In telecanthus, there is increased distance between medial canthi due to abnormally long medial canthal tendons as you can see in this picture. It should be differentiated from hypertelorism. In hypertelorism, there is white bony separation of orbits. The treatment of telecanthus is by shortening and refixation of medial canthal tendons to anterior lacrimal crest or insertion of a transnasal suture. Now let us discuss about blepharophimosis, ptosis and epicanthus inversus syndrome. It is abbreviated as BPES. It is a complex of eyelid malformations consisting of moderate to severe symmetrical ptosis with poor levator function telecanthus and epicanthus inverses. The baby will have small palpable fissures. This picture shows a baby with blepharophimosis, ptosis and epicanthus inverses syndrome. This is his father and this is his grandfather. Both of them have been treated surgically. BPES is also associated with other minor facial anomalies. It is inherited in autosomal dominant pattern. There are two types of BPES. The first one is BPES type 1 in this case, it is associated with premature ovarian failure and the second type is BPES type 2. In this case, there is no premature ovarian failure. Both these types occur due to mutations in FOXL2 gene on chromosome 3. The treatment of BPES is by correction of epicanthus and telecanthus followed by bilateral frontalis suspension. Amblyopia is associated with 50% of cases of BPES and it should be treated adequately. Now, let us discuss about AP blepharon. In AP blepharon, there is extra horizontal fold of skin stretching across anterior lid margin. This picture shows AP blepharon. It is common in people of Eastern Asian ethnicity. The lashes are directed vertically, especially in medial part of lid as you can see in this picture. When fold of skin is pulled down, lashes turn out and normal location of lid becomes apparent. This picture shows normal position of lid in a case of AP blepharon after manual correction. Differential diagnosis of AP blepharon is congenital entropion. The treatment of AP blepharon is observation that is there will be spontaneous restoration with age. However, when the AP blepharon is persistent, we can treat it surgically. Now let us discuss about congenital entropion. Congenital upper lid entropion occurs due to mechanical effects of microphthalmos which causes variable degrees of upper lid inversion. Congenital lower lid entropion occurs due to mal development of inferior retractor aponeurosis. This picture shows congenital lower lid entropion. The treatment of congenital entropion is by Hart's procedure in which we do excision of a strip of skin and muscle and fixation of skin crease to tarsal plate. Now let us discuss about coloboma. It is an uncommon unilateral or bilateral partial or full thickness eyelid defect. In coloboma, the eyelid development is incomplete due to either failure of migration of lid ectoderm to fuse lid folds or due to mechanical forces such as amniotic bands. Eyelid coloboma can be associated with coloboma elsewhere in the eye. Now let us discuss about the treatment of eyelid coloboma. For small defects, we can do primary closure and for large defects, we can use skin grass and rotation flaps. Upper lid coloboma occur at the junction of middle and inner thirds as you can see in this picture and it is associated with cryptophthalmos, facial abnormalities and golden heart syndrome. Lower lid coloboma occurs at the junction of middle and outer thirds and it is associated with systemic conditions like treacher Collins syndrome. Now let us discuss about treacher Collins syndrome. It is also known as mandibulofacial dysostosis. In treacher Collins syndrome, there is malformation of derivatives of first and second branchial arches leading to mandibular and ear anomalies. Clinical features include lower lid coloboma, slanted palpebral apertures, cataract, microphthalmos and lacrimal atresia. This picture shows a baby and her mother with treacher Collins syndrome. Now let us discuss about cryptophthalmos. It is a rare congenital anomaly. In cryptophthalmos, the eyelids are absent and they are replaced by a continuous layer of skin. 
there are two types of cryptophthalmos. The first is complete cryptophthalmos and the other is incomplete cryptophthalmos. In complete cryptophthalmos, a microphthalmic eye is covered by a fused layer of skin with no separation between lids as you can see in this picture. In incomplete cryptophthalmos, there is rudimentary lids and microphthalmos as you can see in this picture. Now let us discuss about Fraser syndrome. It is an autosomal dominant condition. The clinical features include cryptophthalmos, syndactyly, urogenital and craniofacial anomalies. This picture shows a baby with Fraser syndrome. You can see the cryptophthalmos. Now let us discuss about ureblepharon. Ure means white. In ureblepharon, there is horizontal enlargement of palpebral fissure with associated lateral canthal malposition and lateral ectropion as you can see in this picture. Ureblepharon leads to lag of thermos and exposure keratopathy. Now let us discuss about microblepharon. Microblepharon means small eyelids. This picture shows microblepharon associated with anophthalmos. Now let us discuss about ableferon. In ableferon, there is deficiency of anterior lamellae of eyelids. This picture shows a case of ableferon. The treatment of ableferon is by reconstructive skin grafting. There is something called ableferon macrostomia syndrome that is ableferon associated with enlarged fish-like mouth, ear, skin and genital anomalies. This picture shows ableferon macrostomia syndrome. The ableferon has been treated by a reconstructive skin grafting. Note the enlarged fish-like mouth. Now let us discuss about congenital upper lid aversion. It is a rare condition and it is usually seen in infants of Afro-Caribbean origin in Down syndrome and in congenital ichthyosis that is collodion skin disease. It is usually bilateral and symmetrical. This picture shows congenital upper lid aversion in a case of ichthyosis. Congenital upper lid aversion usually resolves spontaneously with conservative treatment or in severe cases they may require surgery. Now let us discuss about ankylobrepharon filiform adnatum. In this case, the upper and lower lids are joined by skin tags as you can see in this picture. They are usually sporadic and the treatment is with transaction with scissors usually without anesthesia. Thank you.